Um, well, I want to welcome everyone to another in-depth from Open Team. So Open Team, the Open Technology Ecosystem for Agricultural Management is a project of Wolf's Neck Center for Agriculture and the Environment. And our dynamic growing community consists of over 35 organizations, now 40, and over 200 individuals who are active every month, sometimes quite more frequently in various working groups and open team related meetings. Um, so our goal for the learning series is to help build the knowledge base of the open team community in a way that fosters coherence and collaboration. And each in-depth helps us to collaboratively evaluate new concepts and technologies, um, some that we'll hear from today. And, and we really seek to address uh, common barriers rather than promote any specific solution. So in this pre-competitive space we build, we bring together public and private partners to achieve better outcomes and accelerate innovation by sharing across boundaries. So today we have with us Tiberius uh, Brastavichiano, uh, co-founder and active affiliate of Sensorica. Um, and so he's going to dive into, into their model and into their open hardware focused value network and sensor network. So I'll hand it over to you. We'll have um, some time for a presentation and interactive dialogue with Q&A. So thanks everyone for joining today. Yeah, thank you. Um, and I'm not alone here, right? This is uh, Tim. Um, also uh, been with Sensorica for quite some time now. He uh, knows the inside outs of the organization and our projects. And we also have Mysum uh, that joined Sensorica a few months, months ago. Um, so uh, yeah, in case of, um, uh, you know, I, I might, introduce them and refer to, you know, or defer to them for, for some, some more insight or some, uh, uh, to uh, explain some things a little better than, than I can do. Um, good. So uh, thank you for being here. Um, we thought about um, what to say to this uh, group of people. We've been interacting with open teams for a while, uh, watching from a distance how you guys do things and how you organize. And we think that there's um, a great amount of synergy between um, Sensorica and, and open teams. Um, the first uh, uh, real contact that we had was during the Clubathon. Um, and um, I think um, we got there together because, because we think alike and we organize uh, in, in a similar fashion. And we, you know, we have these similar ideas about organization, organizational design, uh, innovation. Um, so we know already that there is a match. Um, now it's just about digging a little deeper and see how we could help each other, how we could uh, interface maybe in a more formal way so that um, things start flowing between, uh, between these two networks. Um, I was with Tim yesterday uh, brainstorming about the presentation and we thought maybe uh, we're gonna go with uh, a, a sort of a historical, um, you know, reasoning um, why um, Sensorica, where does it fit in the grand scheme of things, um, the, the present situation, and then describe um, what Sensorica is, uh, uh, and uh, um, how we how we do things, um, why we do things the way we do, and and then connect connect with 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 the interests of open team, okay, or members of this open team ecosystem, um, which is that um, you know um, what we're actually doing is um, working on hardware, um, and um, um, and uh, just to dive a little deeper and see uh, why is the way. Uh, we do hardware uh, interesting, okay? Um, because, uh, you know, uh, when you design something, uh, we have to realize that when you design something, there's a lot of features uh, that get into that something, um, that end product, uh, that are related to the, to the initial motivations, to the economic model, so on and so forth. So if you take, for example, a, a, a paper printer, uh, well, um, you'll see design features that are, uh, put in there to lock you into uh, buying um, uh, car in cartridges, right? So you see how, how the environment, how the philosophy 
uh, how the economic model that sustains the design and production of a product, um, you know, changes completely the, the, the features of this product. So dive a little deeper and, 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 and look into uh, why would it make sense uh, to work with organizations like Sensorica or to adopt this kind of um, economic model uh, to design hardware, uh, what kind of new features this hardware might have, um, yeah, and see how we could uh, we could uh, align, you know, with with the goals of of members of the team. Um, I know this is short, so so we have to we have to get going pretty uh, pretty rapidly. Um, I thought I was not going to um, uh, present something, but actually, team prepared some presentations for me, and um, that's good because we have some visuals. Uh, but we're going to mostly uh, go on the website and and look at the real thing. So I'm going to share my screen if possible. Uh, let's see. Let's share this. There you go. Um, so everybody's okay. Is the yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Cool. Um, so just for the historic uh, perspective here, I have my um, talking points. Um, put Sensorica into into perspective. Um, we believe that we are in a major transition period. Um, um, which is of the magnitude of the transition from feudalism to capitalism, okay? Um, so I'm not gonna preach to the core here because a lot of people probably see the same thing, uh, but this is, this is where we fit. And, and when we say Sensorica, this organization, um, it's not just about making hardware. Um, it has a larger goal, uh, which is to figure out how to, um, figure out how to, um, how to do peer production, figure out how to innovate and, and make and distribute stuff as a network, uh, not as a hierarchical organization, because we believe this is where the world is shifting uh, towards a more network structure, right? Um, and, um, and so we, are, we have this, act, we, are, we are in some, some way activists, uh, political and in, in, in economic activists, um, trying to figure out uh, possible new arrangements um, and, and how they work, okay? And, and it just happens that we work on hardware, uh, but that's, 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 what, that's, that's the garden where we experiment with, with these, these new models, right? Um, and um, and uh, yes, um, so, so we, we see that technology is a, is a driver of change. Um, um, you know, um, put it, if you wanna put it simple, it's the steam engine that, um, that uh, caused the transition from feudalism to capitalism with the emergence of new type of wealth um, and uh, an agricultural based society moved towards a industrial society. Um, so technology introduces new possibilities. Uh, people can do things that they could not do before. And then um, through trial and error, uh, people figure out this, uh, these new possibilities and, and uh, materialize these possibilities. Um, and that turns into um, a um, shift in political and economic uh, systems. So that's the that's the, the grain uh, scheme of things. This is this is where we fit in this history. We think we have this transition, and we're trying to figure out what's next um, and design these these new organizations for the future. Um, so. You know, we, we started Sensorica back in, um, I don't know if I, if I have a slide here, but we started Sensorica back in uh, 2011 <laughs> as a backyard uh, and, and basement uh, project. This is me and Francois doing some, some chemistry and uh, doing some deposition of, of silver on, the, on the, uh, glass. Um, and um, and we, we were greatly inspired by these open source um, movement, open source hardware movement. Um, and we thought that this is a new mode of innovation that was worth um, developing further. Um, and the, the whole idea was to add uh, this um, economic layer um, around the open source mode of innovation, okay? Because we saw that a lot of people were designing, creating these commons and sharing them online. And the only way these things could, could really spread, could disseminate is through the market dynamics, okay? so. Um, we saw that as capitalism preying on all this wealth that was generated uh, from these open source communities. So we needed to bridge that gap between innovation and the market or distribution. Um, instead of having 
capitalistic you know, entities um, um, bridging that gap of, and, and turning into a for-profit operation, uh, we thought maybe we could give networks this ability okay, to, um, to refine, finalize, and, and, and distribute and service uh, these um, new goods. Okay? Um, you can call them products, but in, in many cases, they're not uh, commodities. Okay? They're not designed as, as products. Um, and, and obviously, um, we saw uh, the emergence of um, internet, right, um, of internet, of um, um, blockchain. Uh, and this was, uh, this was our moment, uh, essentially. Uh, that's a picture from the Sensorica Lab, uh, 2015, I guess. And um, I want to see if we have uh, some uh, slide here for the, um, yeah. Just to have some more visuals about the community. Uh, this is a project that we did with uh, WeShare. Um, so we're interfacing a lot with, uh, with other networks. So the whole idea here, uh, talking about the present, is to, to realize that um, now this, this network way of organizing uh, becomes more um, feasible uh, on the global scale uh, with the emergence of these peer-to-peer uh, -peer, um, infrastructures like blockchain and holochain and all that. And we've been developing um, tools um, and experimenting with tools um, to manage processes, to manage resources, right? Uh, the whole idea here is that um, if commons-based peer production, if this peer-to-peer -peer economy uh, is to be a competitor to capitalism, uh, then uh, the new type of organizations need to uh, be able to um, innovate and disseminate uh, their uh, creations more efficiently uh, than um, any traditional um, firm, okay? And uh, to do that, you need information systems. Um, uh, you need tools to, to manage these processes. Okay, like multinationals, they, they use um, ERPs, for example, while networks should use similar tools um, to be able to, uh, uh, to structure their work. So we've been developing this in partnership with other organizations um, uh, to, uh, to be able to scale, right? And, and the tools that uh, we've been using since uh, today we're still using it actually, this NRP. Um, they are um, about, um, they are built on the server client architecture. Um, so it's, uh, it's old stuff. Um, and we're now on the verge of passing um, and uh, um, you know, developing new relations to port these tools on these new peer to peer technologies. So this is where we are, this is the present. Um, <clears throat> So let's have a, so some visuals about, about Sensorica. Um, it, it looks like a hacker space. These are the physical spaces in which we operate it, and, and we work like in hackathons. Um, there's different methodologies of work and different planning styles that we have experimented with. Uh, we can see that a little, uh, a little later. But um, just to dive into the, the environment, uh, see a little bit of the organizational structure. So let me go to the Sensorica homepage. Um, what you can see here uh, as organizational structure, um, we have the network, which is a Sensorica. We call it an open volume network. Um, and that name comes from value networks. It's a term that has, has, was coined by Verna Ali um, a few decades ago. Um, and she studied the way organizations interact and how porous they, they were in, in normal times. And she described, um, you know, this kind of... Um, in, informal structures um, that uh, are always present um, as value networks. And we took this concept further. That's why we call them value networks. So you have the value networks in Sensorica and then you have communities, um, which are um, little groups um, uh, that incubate within this environment. They're soaking into the Sensorica environment, okay? Uh, and uh, and uh, uh, playing with the, the methodologies that we put together and uh, using the infrastructure. Um, and, um, and the idea is that once they get mature, mature enough, they can spin off at something else or some of them, they, they stay. Most active breeding games, um, good labs, um, we interface with climate change, um, seasteading. Um, Praxeco is also um, something that was uh, heavily embedded within the sensory ecosystem, right? Sort of moved, moved away uh, a little further. So you have communities as part of the structure and every one of these communities have projects. Um, so that's um, another feature here of the, uh, the structure. Um, 
so this is a uh, this is the sensorica community within the sensorica open value network it might be confusing because communities came after as a substructure before we had sensorica end project so we added this layer and then we had to call it sensorica community within the sensorica open value network uh might be a little confusing so this is this is how we present the community our communities have been templatized so so you have a template the same kind of template for every community uh, where you um, see where these people are talking, uh, what are they planning? Um, you have uh, the uh, coordination tool, which is a Google um, uh, Google um, uh, calendar, and then you have some projects that are that are featured here, right? And so then you have projects uh, that are uh, by categories. Okay, you can browse uh, projects by categories in different sectors. Uh, we started with scientific instruments, open source scientific instruments. Um, we got into healthcare de devices, which is a, an adjacent possible. We did a lot of work uh, on farming and, and agriculture, IoT and robotics, also a lot of work. Um, yeah, so so let's say go back to the community and dive into one particular project. Um, if I can go back. All right. So this is the this is the newest project in Sensorica and the most active one. It's called. Uh, uh, greens for good and this is a project that Mycin joined recently so that's how the, how a project looks like now what what we need to understand is that projects in sensorica are open ventures so you can you should see them as a as an open enterprise rather than just an open hardware project okay so so it's not it's not about the the this device here that we're designing uh, it is about uh, 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 an econ organization with an economic model to uh, design something, uh, disseminate it, and then sustain that thing out there uh, for some time. Okay, so with every project is an organization. It's an open venture. It's not just a hardware project, right? I have to keep that in mind. And project pages have been templatized, right, also. So it's easy to navigate from project to project. Uh, what you can see here are the objectives of this venture. Um, you can see here the description um which is a bit of a background uh and uh and more details on on this particular venture um and then you have um uh, and links to where we communicate and coordinate you have the planning tools associated with this particular venture and uh some uh, notes of what's important what what are the most important milestones um this is live. Everybody can edit this. Um, it's a, it's an it's an environment that is uh, maintained by everybody, or at least everybody has access to maintain it. Um, getting into budget and contributions. So there's a dashboard um, that allows you to uh, allows everyone actually to to see uh, how the project is going and to jump in if they uh, they sense a problem. Um, and um, and the, the repository of uh, whatever bookmarks, videos, photos, and documents, which are publicly accessible. So um, every one of these projects is a is an open venture. And when I say open venture, it means permissionless venture. Uh, so that's part of this econ economic model that Sensorica puts out there. Um, and uh, we have actually. We have actually started to formalize um, what we call collaborative entrepreneurship. Okay, so when we talk about open ventures, what do we mean by that? Um, well, um, there is here material for a, a, a whole program of learning how to be uh, what we call a collaborative entrepreneur. Um, um, essentially, how to uh, start um, and and conduct these uh, uh, open ventures. Um, so for those that are interested, I'm not going to dive into that, but know that there's a resource. Um, so if you want to dive more into what is a, an open venture, just go there. Um, okay, so that's that's part of the structure. And you can see here a little bit of about how we organize stuff. Um, and, uh, and this is um, one of the tools that we use, the dashboard, right, um, to steward the, the project. Okay, in normal, in, in traditional organizations, you have the, the managerial um, layer that takes care of that um, here because this is a commons-based peer production venture. It's an open, it's an open venture, open and decentralized. 
um, everybody can can jump in and um, uh, well everybody can take the pulse of the of the uh, organization and everybody can jump in and and uh, generate tasks and 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 do something to um, steer it in, in the proper direction. Um, so you see here things about the budget and how it is allocated to different work packages. We call them work packages, which are like departments in a, in a company. Um, so deliverables, it's is like the um, it's making something that we deliver. So it's the R and D department in traditional terms. Um, process maintenance, it's the it's the uh, it's the uh, management, you know, um, side of the of a, of a classical venture. Uh, building capacity would be your your uh, marketing and sales. Um, uh, sorry, uh, not uh, building capacity. It's uh, your HR department, and uh, dissemination is marketing and sales. It's taking whatever you build and disseminate it, which doesn't mean um, uh, using market make me mechanics to to like sales. Okay, to distribute this as a product in the hands of people so they use it as a solution to a problem. Dissemination is broader than that. Okay, so we go into uh, open source, do it yourself devices, and putting it in the hands of people is teaching them how to make it. And in the beginning, is designing it so that they can make it themselves, whatever they are, right? Um, so uh, you see how we move away from traditional marketing and sales, where the focus is making a product and 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 sell it, and and that's that's the way capitalism addresses problems. Okay, by commoditizing the solution. Okay, dissemination. We that's why we use a different term because the the whole goal here is to is to distribute a solution, but not necessarily as a commodity as a product. And um, and uh, there is another work package which is wrapping wrapping up, uh, writing. Uh, I don't know. If there is a wrapping up, if, there could be a project that is ongoing, but um, but this one has an end. <clears throat> so again, this is the structure of the project. So just let's fly over the uh, the, the dashboard to see what what you can actually see. You can see people that are there, the participants, and um, and um, how they've um, uh, contributed to. Uh, uh, no, what kind of role they play with this within this venture, this ecosystem? You can see the contributors and uh, and. Uh, and uh, who's doing what. So, so for example, accounting and finance, you see that Mysem, Praxico and TB have log, have log contributions to this particular uh, work. Um, so um, yeah, um, the, the idea here is that we're using tools, um, the NRP that I, that I just spoke about, we're using tools to track the work. I'm trying to find a link here to the, uh, well, we can go, we can go here. Um, is this the NRP? No, this is the Google Doc. Okay, it's 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 okay. Yeah, this is the NRP. So this is the tool, the NRP that we use to to log um, to log contributions to the project. So what you see here is that this is a process that is part of a project, uh, and um, um, this is what people are doing. And here you can you can record uh, uh, your work and provide some links, uh, which is essentially a claim. Uh, for uh, uh, some type of benefit that, that the system uh, provides you. Uh, so the whole idea here is that um, there is some sort of a planning, some minimal planning that is done. Uh, and then um, there is tasks, there is cues, there is signals of what needs to be done. And then people go and log their contributions, which is a peer reviewed per process. And based on that, we distribute this budget uh, uh, to everybody that contributes, right? Um, and here, because there's a system to capture that data of contribution, then we can provide it as a real time, uh, we can provide some real time information about how the network is doing, right? Um, so you might um, find that, um, um, you know, some, some of activities are, I'm trying to find something here. You might, uh, okay, you can see here who's doing what and, and how much. You can see that I'm a main contributor to this project. I started it. Um, uh, I responded to a call from the university to do this project, so I'm heavily involved. Um, but um, yeah, um, you for example, if you see that some some activities are not uh, well um, are, are not advancing well enough, you can look at the. Um, I don't want to get you dizzy here. You can look at the uh, particular role. So information mining, there's a lot of people in it. So you say, okay, this is probably going to go well. 
but when it comes to documenting, it is only TV that has load time. So, so there's a bottleneck. Okay, so everybody can go there and and fix um, fix problems um, if there's a shortage of resources or um, some other type of you know institutional ills that might happen. Um, you see things are not going properly. You can you can address these problems. So that's the dashboard, right? That's the concept of of a dashboard. Before going into this, I watched a video, um, at, uh, in that view, uh, same thing uh, of um, uh, Comacri and Noah, um, and so I know that uh, you guys spoke about dashboards and um, and planning and stuff and, and tools for um, organizing work in an open environment. Um, so um, I, I'm just maybe um, could tell people that. Uh, they, they can watch this video and they can go back and watch Noah's video because they're complimentary, okay? And it, it provides you more information about um, um, how innovation can be done in a, in a sort of an open network and what kind of you, tools we use and what kind of method uh, methods we use. Um, so let's go back here to, to the planning a little bit. Maybe it's worth uh, looking. How much are we doing with time? And Tim, do you want to jump in and say something? You're good on time. Um, I was one thing I wanted to stress, I guess, is just that um, I think of folks here in this kind of environment working in this area probably are familiar with, you know, Eleanor Ostrom and the idea of the commons and this kind of thing. So um, there's an aspect here that hasn't been mentioned explicitly, but probably comes through is that this environment, the frame of the open value network is kind of like a coordinative commons. So it's an open space where anyone is, you know, uh, uh, part of the process of setting up the infrastructure and the, and the uh, project um, configurations and starting a project and joining a project. Um, so as Tavir's mentioned, that website is editable by everyone and uh, the entries in the NRP system and the setting up of that is also kind of an open uh, affordance for the entire network to be using. So um, that's that's kind of a, a bit of a twist that, that may not have been emphasized in, in that. Um, so it's, it's sort of like a, um, the open value network, it's, it's open to participation. Uh, value is kind of unpacked for you to define according to how your group believes value is meaningful and important to your project. And of course, it's uh, taking on a network structure, you know, fully, fully adopting and leveraging and benefiting from uh, everything that a network can offer. Um, but but the, the the network itself and 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 that kind of thing and these tools and and even the assets that you didn't mention maybe some of the tools and the high tech equipment that can be shared under non dominium right these things become available to everyone uh, to share and it's really more about um, the dynamics it's more about creating the enabling environment for the actual collaboration to move at pace. So there's no barriers to entry, no barriers to collaboration, and everyone is sharing the responsibility uh, for the common infrastructure of the network resource planning software, the um, setting up of the project, the access and the maintenance and the material requirements of the tooling or an equipment that's required. So the, the really it's what it's trying to do is in, enable flow as much as possible. In, in a way that's equitable, fair, people have a voice, it relies on personal responsibility in peer-to-peer -peer relationships as much as possible, um, minimizing sort of an artificial imposition of unproductive hierarchy or other structures, which really might be uh, anachronistic today. So that's all I would add. Yeah. So, you know, we could, the structure is the Sensorica Network Communities and Projects. And we can focus on a project and see how that's conducted. And there's a lot of value to, that we can get from that. But, but like, like a team uh, mentioned, um, he mentioned many things, but one of the things that captured my attention was when it comes to these tools, the NRP, okay? Um, we can focus on a project, but I think the value of what we're doing is in between projects, is this synergy that it can be created, okay? So if we want a model to beat capitalism, we have to we have to we have to realize some of the advantages that we have through sharing and openness okay so this software this nrp has been built with the idea that 
different ventures, every project is a venture, different ventures in any community structure or network can actually build something and whatever they build becomes uh, part of a commons, becomes visible, discoverable, visible, usable, okay, in any other context. So it's this power of remix as the network grows and as, the, as more and more people contribute, I can cite some resource that somebody has created, a digital, a digital, open, uh, a, a digital optical design, for example. This, has, this resource has been created by somebody else in another project. So, so you can use this metaphor of, of, of programming of global variables and local variables. Every resource that is created, it's like a global variable. It's accessible and usable by anybody in any context within this ecosystem. Okay. And, and it's, 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 it's that reduction. It's, it's the ability to remix is the power of remix that grows as the network continues to, to generate these comments, okay? That, that it's the, the, the potential that we need to unleash here to, to, to beat capitalism. Capitalism is highly inefficient because you have, you have um, uh, development that happens in silos in a competitive environment. So people reinvent the wheel all the time, okay? What if we um, uh, make available to any company anything that a company has made, okay? Well, you say, well, that's impossible. Yes, within the framework of capitalism, which is competitive, that is impossible, that it's a nonsense proposition. Okay, people will think you're crazy, but if you put yourself into the context or the, the, the paradigm of, capital, uh, of, of commons based peer production, that makes total sense because people are naturally inclined to share and collaborate. Okay, they understand the power of collaboration and sharing. And they can understand that, that um, how to harness that transparency and that openness in a, in a way that provides them uh, uh, greater advantages. So, so Noah presented these, these, uh, these, you know, something on game theory about the prisoner dilemma or the hunter's dilemma, right? Um, and, and the idea to collaborate to, for a bigger game. Uh, where that's the game that, uh, for a bigger game in, in terms of something that you hunt, that's the game that commons based peer production um, operates on, okay? Um, so so it, it, it makes total sense. Um, I was just going to add that um, from, from one of the motivations and the, the benefits that, that I that highlight, highlight is, is the, the acceleration. So the intention is to open up the capacity to move much, much faster than we currently do in addressing important problems. So that by that mixing and uh, by that reducing the search costs, because everyone's sharing things, things are open. It's, if it's available for me and it's meaningful to me, I will put in the work to go and find it. And then I can make productive use of that asset. So if you think about in a network and the combinatorics, just the mathematics of how many different new possibilities can be tried and explored um, in parallel, um, when it comes to addressing important problems like what your network is addressing around soils uh, and carbon sequestration and soil regeneration, this kind of thing, it, it's really kind of mission driven. You, there's a fundamental, you would like to do it faster, I bet. I bet that time probably is relevant to what you're doing. It makes a difference whether it happens in a year or it happens in a hundred years. Um, then you want to use this kind of organizing structure simply to have the capacity to accelerate. Doesn't mean you automatically go faster, but it means that the design and the architecture of the sort of um, the, the underpinning theory of the organizational form is uh, capable of moving much, much, much faster. Yeah, and scaling much, much, much bigger. So, so when it comes to the theory, and uh, Noah also touched on that a little bit in his presentation, when it comes to the theory, why we do things the way we do? Is it just because we like to do it like that? Or just because we woke up in the morning and had a dream about this? Uh, well, th there, are some, there are some fundamental um, you know, economic reasoning about, about the model that, that we are uh, using. Um, and and you know, f first you can start with, uh, with the costs and, and the transactional co transaction cost theory, why the firm exists. Um, why hierarchies exist within the capitalist system, and uh, and then realize that um, um, when the environment changes uh, and the transaction costs go down, and the cost of discovery, learning, uh, the decision making, bargaining, they they they, they lower, um, then you can have uh, the possibility of existence of open networks. 
And we see that, right? The, the, the Bitcoin network is, is an open permissionless network that uh, works very well for providing a, a global secure service of exchange, right? Um, there's no boss, there's no, there's no, there's no headquarters. Um, so it, it, it just sustains itself. Uh, so that is an open value network, okay? So networks can exist um, um, if, if the proper conditions are, are met. Um, and, and, then, and then you go to Bankler. Well, if networks exist, do they have an economic advantage over the, the traditional firm? And, and it comes up with these this two uh, interesting points, which is information opportunity cost, okay? Networks are better uh, grabbing information and bringing it, bringing it into a development process than firms, okay? That rely on one or two engineers to do some, uh, to do some research before they uh, go to the pen and the paper and the hammer and the screw. Um, um, and, and you know, they're limited in terms of number of worldviews that can look at a problem. They're limited in, in terms of capacity of finding information and bringing it in. Uh, networks are better for that. And that's why open source is hyper innovating um, or hi hyper innovative. Um, and, then, and then another advantage of these networks over traditional firms is um, allocation efficiency, okay? Meaning that um, you know uh, uh, managers are always cutting. They, they have to solve this problem of allocation. Okay, what do you? How do you? How do you take people that have certain skills and, and put them put them into um, into uh, you know a process to execute uh, tasks, and and how do you allocate financial resources to the project and so on and so forth? Uh, well, it turns out that that networks are better for better doing that. So so according to Bankler, you know. Uh, if we look at cost of transaction theory, networks are possible. According to Bankler, they're not just possible. They can actually be more efficient than traditional firms. Okay, so going back to this historical perspective of Sensorica, we kind of sensed that in the beginning and, 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 and we were trying to unleash this potential, right? So, so when we say that we're activists, you know, political economy activists in, in some sense, um, it's, it's trying to, to go beyond capitalism and develop these kind of uh, organizations. Um, and then, and then you think about you think about why uh, Uber and all these platforms uh, can can exist. Why do they exist? Do they exist today? And uh, and is there something that undermines their their, their position in the future? Um, and and the answer is yes, because the the uh, how do you say the, the skills uh, the skills required to develop these platforms and, and access to infrastructure, you know, um, uh, becomes um, becomes more affordable. Um, so you have, uh, for example, blockchains, um, that's, that's already an infrastructure that is there, uh, people uh, maintaining these machines, these nodes, these miners, call them whatever you want to call them, uh, but, but you can run software on, on this network without having to, to develop the infrastructure from the ground up. Uh, and, then, and then more and more um, uh, you know, web development uh, is going and taking some libraries and and, and patching stuff together to, to, to have some functionality out of that. Um, and, and so there are two, also two very important principles that we use at the project level, um, um, building on this you know, theoretical background is um, uh, synergy and stigmergy. Um, and um, and um, uh, meaning that if you really want to scale these networks that are not just possible, but probably even better or more efficient than, than firms, um, you can't continue to do things the way uh, firms do, okay? So you cannot have a project and do planning. Uh, you, have to, you have to push the edge of decision-making, push the decision-making towards the edge and, and, have, uh, and, and allow people to come and, and propose paths of development and, and, have, and have these paths orga be organically um, enforced by other people rather than by a central authority. Okay, um, so so yes, um, you know, um, there's a lot of these processes that happen in the firm, which which are which are uh, uh, de decentralized or distributed, and and we need to understand that. Uh, when I was listening to the video uh, with Noah presenting, you know, uh, there was a discussion about planning, and I have a sense that, you know. Um, we tend to forget that sometimes we operate in networks and, and we, take, we, take, um, we take processes that we, we, we're used to in, in, in a firm and, and try to transpose it, into, uh, transplant it into a, an open network. And 
most of the time it doesn't work. It's not compatible. Okay. So, um, so let's see, maybe it's worth seeing here, um, uh, the traces of stigmergy and, and, um, and um, um, social intelligence um, at work in, in, in this particular project. I just want to throw in that that's a kind of a technical word, but I, I'm sure that folks in this group probably have a familiarity with that. Stigmergy is, is what ants do when they leave chemical trails around their environment so that this coordination is emergent in the environment. Um, so by, you know, leaving a little vote here and a vote there, the other ants kind of follow a pattern, and then they leave a vote and together the, the sort of bottom up emergence of the coordinative, you know, coordination of complex behavior. So I, I think that's a particularly important point. I wonder if you might uh, take a little bit of time to sort of walk through an example of what that looks like, because certainly sort of uh, one of the questions I'm sure in terms of project selection and resource allocation, particularly in in your area with hardware, where the research and development costs are going to be substantial, how do we then allocate, uh, you know, resources towards which projects get documented, even the documentation and project management uh, for those projects to leave that uh, that trail uh, has a cost. Somebody has to do it, and somebody and there's even skill in doing that well mm -hmm. to make it accessible to the next uh, to the next folks. Um, yeah. So there's part of sort of the you know, you're talking about a lot of infrastructure, uh, sort of, and standards and conventions to make that uh, that uh, interpretable, right? Um, and I see that certainly with the platform that you're building. It's you know, uh, there's a whole other call I'd I'd love to have in terms of sort of the process you went to get to the sort of the documentation platform and and sort of structure that you're at now. But uh, I'd love to just hear from your perspective, sort of how that uh, works in. Uh, you know, maybe using one of uh, a project that you, that uh, um, that's ongoing, sort of the pathway from identification of a community need through the actual documentation and manufacturing mm -hmm. and self-sustaining enterprise. Yeah, so um, perfect. So yeah, so this, let's go through this project here <clears throat> and, and look at it. Uh, you, you have to start with some structure so that things start precipitating on top of it. Okay, you, you, you got to have some minimal template. And that comes from a person that has experience with projects from the past. Um, and, um, and so that, that, that person lays down this, this minimal structure, but then things should, should flow. The, the context of this project here is, is, um, um, is research and development. So um, it's a, not a scripted activity. It's not like manufacturing. Right, um, um, it's it's more about creativity. So um, um, there's a, a lot of unknowns that are going to pop up uh, as we go along with the project. Um, so it has to be, uh, you know, keep has to be kept flexible. You can't just plan an R and D. Uh, there are some generic templates that you can follow, uh, but uh, but these are like high level, okay? And and you'll see one of those. Um, Talking about, so we'll follow the, how things are getting done and, and stigmergy and social intelligence, right? Uh, in this particular project. First of all, you can see stigmergy here. What do you see here? These are pheromones, okay? There's, they're, they're, oh, they're... I don't think we can see your screen right now. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, yes, uh, because I, okay. So I'm back to, I'm back to the project page. And uh, so stigmergy is, um, in essence, stigmergy is the uh, use of the environment, physical or virtual, in our case, this is virtual, uh, is the use of the environment to um, um, leave cues behind uh, to inform other peers about what has been done in the past and what can be done now, okay? Um, <clears throat> so now we are in a virtual environment. So you already see pheromones here. You already see some cues, okay? These. Um, these these icons that you will see everywhere so that it tells you where you are. At least it's an orientation, let's say Q. Um, now for the planning, we've just cut the, and budgeting, we've just cut the, the, the whole venture here, which is an open venture into what you would call departments, okay? Dissemination is about your traditional marketing and sales. Deliverables, it's your R&D. The process is your management capacity is your HR department, right? And then what we did, if I go back to the dashboard, um, we took the budget that was given to us by the sponsor of this project. And we said, 
somebody will experience that, well, we need this much of it for deliverables, uh, this much of it for uh, process maintenance and so on and so forth. Okay, um, and, and that's about it. <clears throat> then what you do is that you have a, a template of these processes. So let's jump to deliverables, which is the space for research and development. Okay, this is where, they, this is where people are designing this object and prototyping it. Now, it is in this instant, a Google Doc can be Miro. The idea is to have a, a more free, flexible environment where creativity can fill up the space. Okay, you can't, you can't um, plan an, uh, an R&D process with boxes and time dependencies as in a project management tool. You know, the work environment for people to create stuff should happen in a, in a sort of a, a, a very rich and, and flexible environment. And, and Google Doc is, is one of those and has a lot of features, has history, has, um, has comments, okay? I can, I can ping somebody to it, so as a messaging system, uh, um, you know, um, you can embed pictures, you can communicate, you can deposit information as, as graphs, pictures, text. And every one of these deliverables spaces has a template, okay? And the template you could see it here in the table of contents. You have an orientation section. This is a sort of a meta structure of this process. You have an orientation section. You have to, well, how to read this document is also a type of orientation. Um, you have the description of the project. So put people in context. If, you, if, you, if the first thing you see is this document here and haven't had time to go to the project webpage, then you will have some information here about what this document is about. What is the higher structure around this document, right? So you, you, you can tell you about the description of this project, but also you can see links to go to the project page and see more, okay? Uh, then you have the um, some sort of a meta um, methodology for um, designing something, doing design work, um, which is a reflection about design considerations. Okay, so what are we doing here is that we are doing some information mining as a network. Okay, back to Benkler, information opportunity costs, bringing information into the process. We're building some consensus or some shared understanding. This is where you see um, building a sort of a collective brain. This is collective intelligence at play. It's part of the method, okay? And then, and then, so build shared understanding, okay? And then you go to general considerations and then you go to the actual design uh, and, and the, and the, uh, the uh, prototyping, okay? Um, so let's go down to it to see a little bit how this is organized. This is the orientation tool. Um, you kind of see the same icons that we see on the planning of the web page. Um, and uh, if we dive deeper into the work, this is where the, actually the people work. You have a lexicon, okay? Um, whole system requirements, there you go. So you can see here people um, exchanging uh, uh, comments um, and what I want to lead you to are these little symbols here. This is stigma jet play here, right here, okay? Um, building consensus. Somebody has left a pheromone saying uh, we need to uh, build, we need to uh, compare uh, different things and, and find the common denominator or find the best thing, right? So this is, as you navigate the document, you look for these little symbols here. Men of the shovel, that's a to-do. Okay, so that's a pheromone. I can put that in. I have the power because I have edit rights. Anybody has edit rights. I can put that in, okay? I'm going through this document and see what people are doing, okay? And I see these little signs that people have left behind telling me what they have done and, and what I can do next. Okay, here's another man with the shovel. Let's complete this table now, okay, or below. Um, so, so we use a, a bunch of these symbols uh, and I'm gonna uh, uh, lead you to the, uh, to the list of them right here. Um, some of them um, give cues about the status and you know, give you some updates. 
Um, these are notes. Somebody just had a, an idea, you know, and just wants to put it there. Um, important, you attract people's attention that somewhere in this document, there's something they should stop and consider. To do's. Um, I can start exploring a new thing and, and announce to people, listen, I, I stumbled on this thing. There's a paper. I think we should, we should look at that. I, I, put a, I put a man with a shovel there and, and, and tell people, I'm, I'm going to do that. If you want, you can start digging with me. Okay. Considering different alternatives, reasoning about these different alternatives, um, providing some information, some extra information to people on, on something, and, and, and announcing a consensus, telling people, okay, uh, now stop going laterally. We have decided to focus and concentrate our forces into this direction. Um, if you want to go against the consensus, that's fine, but it doesn't mean that you will be rewarded for your work from the reward mechanisms. So feel free to, to, to break the consensus and go in another direction. But that's a sign to say, we have decided now, after all these explorations, to, 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 go, to, to, to put our resources into that path, okay? So, what so this is governance through editing and contributions. Is that sort of in through the, this document is sort of how you're seeing that process have, evolve? This is more self-organizing based on um, um, a, a sort of a symbolic language um, uh, of, of, you know, based on some signals, okay, a signaling language, let's say, using some symbols, right? Um, and um, and um, it's, it's not quite governance. Um, it's, it's just a, a, a set of, a set of, um, of transparency might be one way mm. to put it. Sort of tra tra signals, like like Tavir is saying, sort of because uh, the idea is to, for it to be self-organizing. So by leaving these signals, you're you're um, leaving a trace of what's important to you, what needs doing, right? Also, it's kind of maybe useful to point out that, as you can see, this is done manually here, right? So this is yes. this is representative of the experimental iterative process over years of using and trying these different open accessible tools. And the reason why Google Docs um, is the kind of thing that would be used is because it's so accessible, right? It 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 meets the criteria of leaving the barrier and the boundary open to participation, um, and also it's it's available in the environment as an affordance. So it's uh, economic and efficient. But uh, a lot of what occupies a lot of thinking and discussion in the background for future and well kind of ongoing but but um, yet to be fully realized is how we can use uh, the latest kind of technologies around multi-agent systems artificial intelligence this kind of thing to provide an automated augmentation to that capacity for self-organization for leaving these traces so if i have like one of the things i uh I'm excited about in the coming years is, is uh, employing what we call process mining. Um, so process mining is where I might, I might give uh, um, uh, sort of agree to allow access to certain logs of my activity on the systems and in the platforms. So I'm going to share, I'm going to publish, like just like price transparency or the disco price discovery as a, as a decentralized problem solving uh, method. If I share or allow the system to sort of share and post signals based on my interaction with the sort of, uh, you know, coordination, uh, open value network uh, infrastructure environments, the virtual environments, um, then I don't need to do this manually. I don't need to drop an icon here and an icon there. My traces are being, you know, as I consent to, to the degree that I want to be uh, contributing to that transparency and that sort of shared information resource, um, uh, my signals are, are going to be sort of um, available to other people. They can see what I'm working on and how intensely I'm working on this and uh, where I'm finding that there's a difficulty, which problems I keep coming back to, who I'm working with, how often am I working with them, uh, what kinds of tasks am I doing, um, what kind of resources do I need. Uh, ideally, all of that is uh, part of the automated background support, right? Uh, not something you have to do manually. But um, since there are not um, sort of uh, currently available st deeply stigmergic coordination network resource planning systems off the shelf right now, we're, we're currently cobbling it together this way. Great. Well, I, I think this, this is definitely going to be worth uh, having you back uh, to focus in on a, a few of these uh, topics. We're getting to the top of the hour. 
Um, and I know there are probably lots of questions here that we'll have to save for another another session. Uh, I want to note that the next in depth is going to be on July first. We'll have uh, Sumer Johal with the Linux Foundation and AgStack uh, to uh, uh, talk a, a lot about that project and some of the foundational infrastructure uh, and sort of uh, commons libraries and so forth that uh, that they're working on that side. So I think all complementary in this uh, in this series and I think we're following that with uh, uh, with a look into on the 15th I believe um, looking at essentially creating a visual uh, actually uh, extension on the visual language and digital storytelling um, very much icon icon based communications too so that'll be interesting mm -hmm. to see that um, that uh, follow up but with a different application so um, Thank you all for joining. I, uh, I'm sorry we didn't get to more questions, but there's a lot of content here and a lot more coming uh, down the pike. So uh, thank you all for joining and thank you all for, for, for a great presentation and we'll um, see you all again soon. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks so much, Tim and TV. Thanks.